remember these new cables from a couple of videos ago uh today's the day i need to put those in i now think i have enough power to uh how should i put this it's like i have more power than i know what to do with uh, we have a lot of power now uh, doing a little addition i have it temporarily wired in right now i've got the longer cables i can actually put a uh, a new battery uh install it where it belongs uh somebody that's been with the channel for a while know that the coachman here has uh two separate battery systems it has the primary system that has the the lead acid batteries in it uh I have 500 watts of solar charging that and then i added on a secondary system uh with lithium batteries same thing it has identical uh, charging system in it. it has 500 watts uh charging that system as well all right, we're just up here on the roof for just a minute. I just wanted to show you. There's the, uh, the all these 100 watt panels. There's five of them back here that go to the lithium uh, system. And then there's five more up there that go to the lead acid uh, system. So we have equal, equal amounts going to each system. I'm gonna tell you what though. I am so done with lead acid batteries. I cannot wait. I can't upgrade this. Uh, the main i'll call it the primary system the the onboard one that came with the motorhome you know it was uh, the powers the lights the water pump the uh the furnace motor the hot water tank igniter you know all that stuff that's built into the uh into the system uh into the motorhome uh that's the primary system that's the lead acid batteries are running all that i had this second uh the secondary system i'll call that uh because i had to put a i ended up putting a residential refrigerator in it and uh i needed that's a whole nother story and i wanted to make sure it had a dedicated system to power that uh trouble free uh, i didn't have to worry about it running down i i wanted it, the refrigerator to have its own system uh and not to run anything else off of it for a while just to make sure it was just it plenty of power all the time i didn't have to worry about my food so that's how that all kind of came about what I found out was the lithium side, you know, I wasn't using a ton of power from it. The, uh, the, the the residential refrigerator does use some power, but what I found out was the, the, the with 500 watts of solar, that that lithium battery charged uh, so much quicker than the lead acid batteries that by 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, easy, uh, that battery is all fully charged back up again or you know from the yeah you know, the 500 watts of solar bang throws that into the battery it accepts it more uh much more quickly uh it's full and then i have the rest of the day there's still 500 watts of solar it, it would just keep on going and going and going but my battery is full where, where does that go that's all that power a whole afternoon's worth of power just being left on the table as they say um you know, it's like collecting rainwater <laughs> once the bucket's full it just overflows you don't if you don't have a big enough container to store more of it um so it turns out i thought well if i could get a second battery uh, you know batteries are really just a storage container it's just an energy storage container so i wanted to store more let me get a second bucket you know my first bucket's full by 10 or 11 in the morning um all this power is still going on the rest of the day. Let me get a second container, a second bucket, and fill it up too. So I have all this power available. Right now, as it sits, <laughs> right now, as it sits, I have enough power to run this refrigerator. Okay, it uses 1,200, 1200 watt hours in a 24 hour period. And these, in the one battery, you has, uh, let me look at this real quick. All right, well, I'm looking that up here. Where's my calculator thing at? This is the new battery. Uh, it's a Redotto, um, uh 200 amp hour plus, which is actually, the plus means uh, it has a little extra in it. It's actually 230 amp hour. So um, 230 amp hours. Now, I already have the first one. Uh, it's a, actually a different brand, but it has the same specs the amp hours and uh, uh battery management system uh, same specs and everything uh so that one's already been installed so this is my second container 
but uh, so it's also a 230. Uh, uh, a 200 Pro or a 200 Plus. I don't know. They're both 230 amp hour. Um, but let's just go with the one for, for the moment. Uh, the 230 amp hour uh, times the nominal value, 12.8 volts times, uh, yeah, 12.8. All right. Uh, that's uh, 2,944. Uh, 2, so the refrigerator only uses 1,200 in a 24 hour period, one battery would easily run that, uh, one battery would easily run the refrigerator for two days plus, cause that would only be 2,400, all right? So that would be, and that would be like, <laughs> it would run it even if I just turned my solar off or there was a total eclipse of the sun for two days. Uh, in other words, what I'm getting at is if, you know, we got some cloudy days and my solar wasn't working, uh, getting in, bringing much in, although it still brings some, I still get some solar on cloudy days, some, uh, uh you know, sun uh, rays still filtered through, but even if there's not, even if I threw blankets on top of the, <laughs> blocked them out completely, the sun was blocked out or the solar was turned off, one battery would run that for easily for a little over two days. So two batteries. Okay, wait, wait a minute, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. So uh, let's just go times two. Times two equals, wow, that's 5,888 watt hours. Um, let's divide that by the original um, 1,200 that it uses. All right, that's 4.9 days. All right, let's see here. Let's see. 4.9 days the two batteries would run that so now what i found out is i have all this surplus of power um uh so now what i could do with all that yeah you know, i've i've managed to go and plug the tv and that doesn't use a ton of power and i don't watch it for long periods of time but there's that and just adding the phone to it um i've started like recharging some of these uh 1000 watt portable power thingies and uh my toaster and using the coffee pot you know i'm starting to use more and more from this system from this inverter so i have a i have the both batteries right now hooked into that 2000 watt inverter um so i have all that power and i'm just learning okay how much of it can i really get away with using and it's it's um um i don't know what to say it's a lot it's a lot Say, that ain't Bella. Say, what happened to Bella? What'd you do? You're an imposter. What'd you do with Bella? What'd you do with... All right. All right, there you are. It's all, it's all good. We're dog sitting right now. <laughs> so, and as usual with these videos, I don't get into, I don't get into all the tech specs and the, all the particulars about it. These, uh, the... It's the same. It's the same with so many of these uh, uh, lithium batteries and all this new technology out uh, with the the power thing, the portable emergency power backup things, the the lithium battery stuff. They've been around a while, but you know it's, it has become real competitive, and the pricing is reflecting that. Um, there are a huge a huge amount of cycle times, a ten ten year lifespan at. 98 percent capacity or something and then it diminishes somewhat but the the lifespan of these things is for, forever um <laughs> uh i don't imagine ever going through one of these uh it's like five-year warranties uh, you have to go to the website or whatever um i'll don't quote me on all those numbers or whatever i'm i'm speaking in general terms or whatever the, you know these things are proven reliability now they've been around a while and um uh, incredibly long warranties and, and and compared to like lead acid batteries and the amount of power you can use and the quick charge times this battery has oh, oh so how much did i say that was two of these batteries let's go back to just one of them let's go back to just this one battery uh let's divide that number back by two again to make it a single battery so uh, i did that all wrong okay 230 <laughs> times 12.8 the nominal value of 12.8 12.8 8 equals almost 3,000, uh, yeah, 2944, almost 3,000 watt hours. 
Now, the lead acid bath, that's just one of those. And the equivalent, I can't even say, I can't even say the equivalent of. Um, my lead acid is, my four lead acid batteries are 380 uh, amp hours. Nearly, tw nearly twice that, right? Not quite. Um, right, 380 watt hours times lead acid's different chemistry times their nominal value, uh, 12 volts, 12 volt batteries. This is different chemistry. Their nominal value is 12.8. So 380 watt hours times, or amp hours times 12 volts is 40 45 45 60 okay but lead acid you know you can only use like about 50 percent of that uh before you start damaging the battery divided by uh yeah uh, 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 oops whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't... divided by two is only 2280 okay so um I forgot what the other number was now. Yeah, it's 29.44. So, one of these has more power than four, all four of my lead acid batteries. And it takes up less than half the, I bet less than half the space. If I took two of my lead acid batteries, they would take up about that. There's more power in about half the space and about a third the weight. I'm not even gonna look up the weight. Um, my lead acid batteries are about 65, I think 65 pounds a piece. I forget what this weighs, um, up, <laughs> uh, but it's not even comparable. So, the same thing's true with you know, when I, I reviewed the first uh that first one I put in there and you know, all the same things are, are, are true about the space savings, the weight savings, the warranty, the useful, useful life of it, the amount of power, the faster charging, um, the price, you know, per, per watt hour and per, and yeah, you factor in the lifetime of the dang thing. It does not make sense to ha even buy lead acid batteries anymore or even AGMs. AGMs is even a worse deal. Um, the only advantage to AGMs is that they're, um, they can be inside. They're they're not vented like lead acid. That's like the only advantage. Uh, I'd say I'd argue that I'd have to I'd have to look it up, do the research to prove it. But <laughs> I would say I say that lead acid batteries actually have more power and uh, perform better than AGMs. So uh, and I'll get some arguments and push back on that. But um, th they're very comparable I, at least. You got to say that. And neither compares to lithium. It's just it's crazy. Um, I'm so I am so happy with with, the, with these lithium battery uh, the performance of these lithium batteries that I can't wait to upgrade the rest of my system. I'm done. I'm so done with lead acid. These these are these are going away. I'm going to upgrade the rest of the system uh, soon. And um, both system like I say, this is all comparable to. It's very comparable because I have equal amounts of, you know, I got 500 watts charging that and I got 500 watts charging that and I see what each does. I see how they, now granted they're doing slightly different jobs or whatever, but um, this just charges so much faster. Like I say, I'm ready to get a bucket out for another bucket to store all the power that's still laying on the table because uh, the first one is charged. With. There's no way I would do that with a lead acid battery. They take, they're taking them forever and... Uh, I'm just waiting for the first bucket to fill up and, uh, you know, the day's gone. So, um, uh, there's no point in expanding that with lead acid, uh, unless I'd really get more solar too. So it's like having more solar without having more solar. Uh, that just makes sense. <laughs> All right. This is not properly mounted. You may have already noticed that I short term, uh, until I got the longer cables, uh, which I have now, um, I just put it up there with some cables I had or two gauge, uh, and I blocked this thing in with, uh, I, I blocked it in with other items that I have cleaned out of there right now. 
and there, there were things that like kind of settle and dig into the carpet so nothing was going to slide anywhere uh, heavy things that have uh they leave a footprint you know you know they kind of settled and dug into the carpet um but so and i still didn't i meant to stop at lowe's and pick up uh some farring strips and some screws uh because when i put it in here I'm going to duplicate what I did over here and then it put farring strips around it, screw it down through into the plywood floor so that it can't shift anywhere. But um, anyway, this is at least going to go in here for now. And I already have, the holes are already drilled for other reasons. I have that power strip uh, coming in from the lead acid side, which you can see there's no longer anything plugged into it because I really can't afford to take any more power uh, from that. Uh, you know, it's just... It just it's, doesn't have that much power uh, available. It's gotten dusty. It's not used anymore. Anything that was over here is now plugged into that inverter. Because here's where the surplus is. Uh, this is the new the new healthy uh, system. Yeah, it's <laughs> their their uh, what's our logo or uh, what is it? it's younger, bolder, and stronger at the Redado Power uh, dot com. Like I said, I'll leave the link uh, in there, you know, being the holiday season. I'm sure they have sales and uh, coupon codes and stuff. I'll leave any of that stuff down in the uh, video description. But we're going to go ahead and, and uh, get this little task at hand. Yeah, I've cleaned the benches off. Oops, almost. Not quite. <laughs> I've cleaned the benches off. Oh, there's the dog. i got to clean the dog off this one. Yeah. And uh, get these benches up because i got to take the wires uh, those shorter wires off of that battery, put that battery in there, get the longer wires hooked up, and then, then I can put my, uh, my mess all back together. <laughs> what? Speaking of messes. <laughs> uh, the trouble is I have other messes to deal with, um, under these benches. Uh, there's parts for projects. There's a new, uh, LED, uh, tail lights I got for the coachman, which is, uh, uh, that is on the project list somewhere. Kind of, it's kind of dry. The ones in the back now, they do work and everything, but uh, I want to upgrade them. <laughs> uh, it's just kind of lower, on, it's gotten lowered on the list somehow, but uh, we'll get to that. Anyway, so here's that. I painted them black. That's a um, one by two furring strips. Uh, yeah, I painted them and yeah, put some wood screws uh, down through. And then a nice, uh, then a longer piece on that side. So it's really, it's trapped in this corner. It, it can't go anywhere. So that's what I'm going to do with the other one. And, uh, yeah, so I could unhook some wires, uh, run the, uh, the new longer ones over into that compartment and, uh, get that one over there, get it all hooked up. So, uh, probably the other side's even, uh, the other side's even worse. It somehow has tools kind of thrown in here. I, uh, obviously didn't put things away very neatly last time, but, um, and for now, a uh, little wiring, wiring kit. And uh, we got some plastic uh, cases. That's probably what I'll uh, block it in with. Uh, now I'm gonna have to watch out what kind of things in here that are metal. Okay, um, there are protectors uh, on there, but they're not 100% uh, protected. I will want to be sure that nothing metal like this, uh, like this uh, pie iron. We call these mountain pie irons. They're called camp cookers, but I, I wouldn't want something like that to accidentally. Uh, bounce around and then go up and touch them terminals so i'm gonna have to pack this differently i might even actually put a divider that's probably what i'll do is i'll probably put a um because this is my tool department obviously and uh uh there are going to be some metal things in here you know some things are safe in plastic and uh i'll keep i keep metal things the furthest away from it but the safe the safe thing to do probably would be to put a divider in here uh, so there's just no chance of anything bouncing around and, and getting up in there. That's that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh-oh, another project. Oh, look. Uh, a new valve for the gray tank and a new valve for the black tank. Uh, the, the gray one drips a little bit. And uh, well, it's better than the black one driven. But, uh, uh, yeah, the black one doesn't drip at all. But while I'm doing it, I'm going to be back there doing that job. They're, it's got a few new ones. So that's even, uh, that's on the list somewhere. This is more the project side of things. Oh, and if you're worried about heat, uh, if you're worried about these, uh, any concern about whether it gets too hot in here or too cold for uh, lithium batteries, 
what I did was uh, I have those uh, remote temperature things that I keep them. I did keep them in my refrigerator freezer. I took the one out of the freezer and I laid it in there right down beside alongside the, that battery down there. So I know I know it's never going to get too cold because the furnace duct runs through here <laughs> and it helps heat this. Uh, but I want to be sure it didn't get too hot. So even in cooler weather, that wall is insulated. And it has three sides. They're exposed to the temperatures in here. So it's more going to be more influenced by the comfortable in temp, uh, inside temperatures in here. This is never going to get too cold in here. And here's that readout for that. The top one right now is at 67 degrees. Uh, that's the one that's by the battery. That used to be in the freezer. And it's only ever reached a high of uh, 82. And uh, we have had a couple hot days. And, you know, so whether it was hot days, uh, whenever it reached that time or that temperature, it was either dur during a hot day or uh, during that, that's how one that compartment got uh, at the most with the furnace running. And, uh, and the coolest it's gotten is 60. So uh, those are within the... Uh, Normal operating um, temperature, so, and that's been in there for uh, quite a while. So I'm, um, I know that that's uh, that's the range to operate. We're we're good there. Um, so I would guess if I do the same, if I'm going to move that temperature thing over here along with the new uh, the new battery, the new uh, Rodado battery, and uh, and we'll monitor this one here. It might end up being a little bit cooler. Uh, it probably will because uh, it doesn't have the ductwork. And uh, it just tends to be a little bit cooler here in the front. There's the front door. Uh, you know, the gaskets don't always seal. Just seems a little more draftier and uh, a slightly cooler zone up here in this front corner. So, uh, but I'm sure it'll be within safe, uh, uh, safe uh, temperature range. All right, I'm gonna get some of this out of the way and get that battery in there. I need to get this hooked up so I can get my messes uh, dealt with. And get this jaw behind me for now. All right, two things I need to turn off is first is the uh, supply, the uh, the solar supply, and then I also need to turn off the that two thousand watt inverter. So I need to shut everything off. Yeah, these right now are uh, yeah, it's blanking, so it's showing that it's charged. It, uh, no, where is it? Right, okay, here's my little breaker down here. I just uh, see, it's just push that and bang. So, and all of a sudden, they, uh, that showing that it was charging is now, uh, has stopped. Yeah, 0.4, 0 coming in. All right, so the power is off. And also, according to the instructions, uh, uh, to, of course, always read the instructions. It did come with them. Uh, the, uh, always read that first. Uh, one of the big things was when you're joining batteries together that before you hook them together is to um, one at a time individually completely charge each battery so and so if these are brand new out of the box because they ship them I think it's law they ship them between only with 20 to 50 percent charge so when you get them they're, they're they, they won't have 100 percent charge initially you have to charge them up so, um, and I did that with these uh, at the time. Uh, I hooked them up, I, uh, everything's off, hooked the charger up, made sure that was 100%. And uh, hooked this one up, made sure it was 100%. Uh, then I joined them up and started uh, turning things on. But, uh, okay, so let's uh, switchy poo over here. All right, so now the refrigerator or, uh, or anything else for that matter, nothing's gonna come on. So they'll uh, they'll retain that charge. I'd hate to unhook the one and be working on it, and all of a sudden the refrigerator refrigerator came on and started draining the other. <laughs> Not that it doesn't have plenty of power, but it would just cause a slightly unequal. Uh, yeah, I'd probably do get this done fast enough. It wouldn't be that big of a difference, but it is a slight difference, and uh, we want to try to keep everything the same. All right, these are six foot cables. All right, I think they're gonna be plenty long enough. And according to the chart for the uh, uh, the two gauge, which uh, these are uh, number two, uh, six foot, they are good for up to um, 2,000 watts. 
and I do have the 2000 watt inverter. I never, I never pull anything close to 2000 watts uh, for the for the current that I'm pulling. I mean, at most, maybe a thousand watts, half that with uh, you know with that, uh, or the, the coffee pot or the George Foreman grill, which are more down, or the toaster, which are all down around the six or eight hundred watt range. That would be the the heavy hitter, the thousand watts, which is only half of uh, you know the capacity I'm kind of building for. Now, if I had a system where I was putting more batteries together and I had, uh, say, I upped the, you know, the 500 watts up to a thousand or, or lots more, say I was building a, a, a system aiming for, say, running this roof air conditioner, which pulls, uh, this is only 9,000 BTUs. It pulls like just under 1,400 watts. Uh, but still, that's getting up there. You know, the, the more, if I was starting to build, uh, aiming for, pulling you know more heavy hitting items and i needed to say a bigger inverter yet a 3000 watt or four whatever uh, to run bigger stuff i would have to gauge my wire size accordingly and that would also have to be increased uh pulling bigger draws uh you know need bigger better stuff all right so uh let's hope these six foot's gonna be long enough to to do this it's nice to have that space uh cleared back up again now I can put more junk under here. All right, that worked out really good. I uh, the, the cables were plenty long enough. There was no, uh, there's plenty of plenty of slack to go everywhere I needed it to. So we're all hooked up. I did turn the inverter back on. Yeah, it's good thing. I'm glad them cables were all, uh, long enough. I didn't uh, or wires. I didn't. I didn't bring my wire stretchers. So uh, that all worked out good. Uh, I guess all that's left is to put the uh, go turn the solar panels back on. And uh, even with those off, let's see, right now these are resting at, uh, with no input uh, from the solar panels. Right now they're resting at 13.7. Uh, that's pretty stinking healthy. Uh, they are fully charged. Uh, now I got two big full buckets with, I can go days without any, uh, through plenty of cloudy days and, and still be fine and, and power to spare for you know appliances and stuff and uh th this is so much the way to go uh like i said I'm, i can't wait to get the other uh, uh my other system upgraded to lithium and uh leave those old lead acid batteries behind forget about those this is the way to go anything else let's uh and you know i've never seen this drop below uh with these two batteries and even charging that thing up top, that uh, battery thing, and run the refrigerator. And we have had some cloudy days. I don't think I've ever seen this drop below um, 13.3, maybe maybe it was 13.2 one day. So I have, um, I just have tons and uh, uh, tons and tons of power now. This is just is not an issue. I'm not worried about my refrigerator ever not having enough power. Uh, oh, and the difference here too, the other reason I want to, uh, let me turn this back on. Yeah, we have no uh, input right now. That's reading the uh, what the battery had to say. Let me turn this power back on and we, well, we should see some input start coming back. Yeah, that usually takes a minute or two to uh, charge controller kind of looks at everything and figures out what's going on and what to do with it but uh, that will start blinking here in just a minute it's uh, inputting there we go there it starts to go that top light came on you know once it recognizes it'll probably look a little bit longer and they'll realize the batteries are pretty happy and that'll go back into uh it'll recognize that they're fully charged so all right so that's all back on now i do have a little bit of uh, a couple loose ends to wrap up here i uh like i said i should have i'll have to take this cover back this bench back off when i get down to yuma uh we're going to pick up some other things uh go to the home improvement store i i wish i would have picked up those uh furring strips while uh i was still up in lake havasu at the lowe's or home depot up there and, and, and i you know, I got to end up taking this back off to do that. But I've kind of built uh, built a puzzle around it of non-metallic things. That, uh, it's going to be blocked in there. We're, we're not uh, 
Uh, not real far from getting down to, to Yuma and get those pieces in. But here's the other, uh, here's the other things here. I got the, some wires running back here. And I also like to uh, make sure my wires are attached firmly. Uh, oops. So I've got an assortment of these a while back and they have been incredibly handy. So I think I gotta, let's see, there's two of them. These are these rubber coated, uh, or rubber cushion cable clamps. And they are so handy for doing this kind of stuff. So I think I got two there and two more there that size. So I'm gonna at least secure, I'm not worried about the wires or back behind there. This is gonna be secured in, nothing's gonna really happen there, but I wanna secure these wires, you know, at least there and, you know, I'll pick a couple of good midpoints there. I'm not worried about anybody really tripping over them or <laughs> I don't expect them to get tugged on, but I just like things to be secured. Uh, actually, I might put two of them right there too where they go up into the inverter. Uh, but, uh, so we got, uh, uh, I might actually need to pick up a couple more of these big ones. The rest are for smaller clamp sizes. These are incredibly, incredibly handy to um, put on a cable run a screw or a bolt through it and you know fashion your cables all, all nice and securely so that prevents ends from uh you know things getting tugged on or vibrating and uh ends coming loose so uh yeah, just is a safer uh makes for a little safer longer lasting uh setup and connections so i'm gonna have to get that uh, i'll dig out some screws and get that work done uh, get this wrapped up all right, things seem back to normal around here. Uh, it's all back together. Uh, Bella's doing okay, <laughs> Gee, as always. And then, everything okay with you? Is everything good? Are, are we good? Huh? <laughs> all right, but I guess the last thing about these is about my charge controllers. They're both, they're identical systems identical solar panels the 500 and 500 the 40 amp rover charge controllers one over here and one back there for each of the systems so all my charging things is identical the difference is here's what happens some of you know i get up like crazy early stupid early in the morning or maybe i just get up crazy stupid uh early in the morning and the uh the one for the lithium batteries, okay, I've charged some things that evening. I watched some TV. The refrigerator's run during the night. I, I like, never see it. I mean, even in the morning, uh, what is it, like 13.2 or 13.3? It's, uh, I mean, it just, it barely puts a dent in it. Right? You know, the, in the, the other one, you know, it's like, I've seen it down to 11.9, 11.8, sometimes 12. You know, every morning, and it doesn't get, heavily used in the evening it will will eventually get fully charged in the daytime like i said it takes a lot longer than a, this other one is done well ahead of time that i've got that extra bucket because i have that much you know um it's done early this one takes it does finally charge but then them lead acid batteries just don't and i'm and i'm not even using them that heavily my laptop uh maybe just some dishes run the water pump a couple of times all my lights have been converted to LEDs, so they're not using a bunch of power. Uh, the furnace runs, you know, I run my Mr. On cool nights, I run my Mr. Buddy heater on on low sometimes. So the furnace doesn't work that hard at all. You know, it might kick on a couple. If it's cool enough, it might kick on a couple of times for a little bit. But it's, you know, that's not put a big demand on it. And they just, they're just, my lead acid battery is just, just sad. And that's, and that's at 4 a.m. There's still three hours of darkness left to, and there I am turning my laptop on. Them things are already lo low enough. And, uh, you know, it's like energy crisis over there. And it's our energy surplus over here. Um, goodbye lead acid batteries. I want better batteries that are charged faster and hold more power and, I need bigger, fast charging buckets. <laughs> How's that? I, I invite you to go out and do your own shopping. Look at the warranties, the pricing, the uh, the cell quality. Those are built with uh, grade A cells, uh, all that. So uh, good warranties. I mean, but do your own shopping. But there they are. Um, the Red Auto batteries. They all the different sizes of 50 amp, 100 amp, 200 amp, 3, 400 amp. So shop around. 
And that's all I got for this video. I like it. <laughs> I'll see you next time. What is it? What are you looking at the toaster oven for? There's nothing in there. No toaster oven for you. Might be a couple crumbs in there. There you go. Oh, darn. Nothing in there for me. I just resume my nap time. What say you? Huh? You girls think it's time for like a little snack? Should we get like a little snack? Hmm? Snacks? <laughs> uh.